Hi all, in this video I am going to talk about a bryophyte. Rixia. The systematic position is phylum Marcantiophyta class Marcantiopsida subclass Marcantiidae order Marcantiales family Rixiaceae and the genus is Rixia R I C C I A. Now coming on to the morphological features of the plant you might have noticed uh, this type of prostrately growing carpet like green colored plants in your courtyard and it belongs to the plant Rixia. There are two phases in the life cycle of Rixia the gametophytic phase and the sporophytic phase. Gametophytic phase and the sporophytic phase. The gametophytic phase is dominant phase in the life cycle. The external features of the gametophytic phase are the plant body of Rixia is thalloid in form. The thallus is green, flat and fleshy. It grows prostrate on the ground and are dichotomously branched. You can see the thallus here. This is a thallus. See this. These are the thallus. And the thallus will branch dichotomously. That is like this. One thallus is dividing into two. And this type of branching is known as dichotomous branching. Because of the repeated dichotomous branching of the thallus, it shows rosette pattern of arrangement on the ground. The thallus is having a dorsal surface and a ventral surface. A dorsal surface and a ventral surface. Dorsal surface meaning the upper surface and the ventral surface meaning the lower surface. The branches of a thallus is known as thallus lobe. See, this is a thallus lobe. And this thallus lobe is having a central midrib portion. See, this region. It will be thick and fleshy. And this is known as the midrib portion. This midrib carries a furrow. See, you can see furrow here. Midrib carries a furrow. Here, you can see a furrow or the groove. And this furrow or groove is known as dorsal groove. This median longitudinal groove or the dorsal groove end in a depression at the apical region. See this. The dorsal groove is ending in a depression at the apical region forming the apical notch. This portion is known as this portion is known as the apical notch. In the apical notch the meristematic tissue or the growing points are situated. And all this dorsal groove and fleshy midrib are seen on the dorsal surface of the plant. Now, coming on to the ventral view of the plant. See, this is the ventral surface of the plant. Ventral surface of the plant. On the ventral surface of the plant, you can see the rhizoids. See, these are the rhizoids and scales. Rhizoids and scales. There are two types of rhizoids. They are smooth walled rhizoids and turbiculate rhizoids. Turbiculate, U R B E C U L A T E. Turbiculate rhizoids. That is, in the case of turbiculate rhizoids, you can see peg like ingrowth inside the inside the rhizoids. If a rhizoid is with a peg like ingrowth, it is known as turbiculate rhizoid. If the rhizoid is smooth walled, 
this such a rhizoids are known as the smooth walled rhizoids now coming on to the scales the scales are multicellular and one cell in thickness multicellular and one cell in thickness it will be violet in color and are arranged in one transverse median here in one transverse median at the apex but in the older region you can see the scales on the lateral row near the margin lateral rows near the margin and these scales are multicellular and one cell in thickness the main function of the scale is the protection i have told you that at the apical region or or the in the apical notch the growing points are situated here these scales will be slightly projecting outside projecting outside protecting the apical growing region of the thallus here you can see the difference between the two surfaces of uh, the rixia that is the dorsal surface and the ventral surface this is all about the features or the morphological features of the gametophytic phase of the thallus the reproduction in rixia the reproduction in rixia is taking place through the vegetative method and the sexual method the vegetative method include five different types among this the first one is death and decay of older portion of the thallus earlier i have told you that uh, the apical notch of the thallus will be carrying the growing tip here you will it will be carrying the growing tip the older portion of the thallus disintegrate and this decay once reaches the dichotomy here once it reaches the dichotomy the four branches here you can see four branches first one second one third one and fourth fourth one okay once the decay reaches the dichotomy the four branches will get separated and each branch will develop into a new thallus this is known as death and decay of older portion of the thallus the second one is by the adventitious branches formation by the adventitious branches and it is seen in the case of rixia fluitans in this small adventitious branches are developed on the ventral side of the thallus like the small adventitious branches are developed on the ventral side surface of the thallus and each adventitious branch develops into a new plant this is known as the vegetative reproduction through Uh, the adventitious branches and is seen in the case of rixia fluitans the third method is by the persistent epicis it is seen in the case of dis rixia discolor due to the prolonged summer or towards the end of the growing season the whole thallus in some species dries and get destroyed except the growing point except this growing point the whole thallus is getting destroyed and this growing point 
under favorable condition develops into a new thallus and this is known as by persistent epicycles under vegetative reproduction now the fourth type of vegetative reproduction is by tuber formation this is seen in the case of rixia discolor during the end of the growing season the epicycles of the thallus lobe get thickened and develop into the tubers here tubers are developed at the epicycles once the favorable condition is returned a new thallus is developed from these tubers and this is known as the vegetative reproduction by tuber formation the fifth one is vegetative reproduction by the rhizoids and this is seen in the case of rixia glauca here the rhizoids undergo repeated division producing gemma like mass of uh, cells in rixia glauca that is the rhizoid undergo repeated division producing a mass of cells and these mass of cells develop into a new thallus and this is known as the reproduction vegetative reproduction by the rhizoids these are the different methods of vegetative reproduction that is the death and decay of the thallus by the edentitious branches by persistent epicycles by tubers and by rhizoids now the second method of reproduction in rixia that is the sexual reproduction in rixia the sexual reproduction is oogamous type oogamous type it include the male reproductive organ antheridium and the female reproductive organ archegonium the antheridium and archegonium are produced on the dorsal surface of the thallus that is on the dorsal surface of the thallus the antheridia suppose this is the thallus and this region is the dorsal surface and this region is the ventral surface and in the dorsal surface the antheridia and archegonia are seen embedded in antheridial or archegonial chamber like this suppose this is the antheridial or archegonial chamber the antheridia or archegonia are remaining embedded like this now coming on to the structure of antheridium antheridium is a club shaped structure attached to the thallus with the help of a stalk this is the stalk and this is the body of the antheridium it is seen in antheridial chamber see this space this space is known as antheridial chamber you can see the photosynthetic filaments these are the photosynthetic filaments the antheridium includes an antheridial wall or sterile jacket body of the antheridium is having a antheridial wall or the sterile jacket inside the jacket you can see the sperm mother cell which may develop into the androcytes or spermatids this may develop into androcytes 
this is all about the structure of antheridium now coming on to the structure of archegonium in the case of rixia it the archegonium is included in the archegonial chamber see this space is known as archegonial chamber the archegonium consists of a venter this region is known as venter and uh, this region is known as neck venter and uh, neck the venter include two cells the ventral canal cell see this one this is the ventral canal cell and uh, the lower one is the egg cell that is the venter include two cells ventral canal cell and the egg cell the venter is a slightly bulged structure and the neck is a narrow one so the archegonium is taking a shape of flask that is the archegonium is flask shaped in structure the wall of the archegonium is known as archegonial wall or the jacket cell this is all about the structure of archegonium after fertilization between the androcyte and the egg the zygote is produced the zygote is deployed in structure that is i have told you that the main part of the plant body is a gametophyte that is the plant will be haploid in structure the gametes after fertilization produces a diploid zygote and this diploid zygote is starting the sporophytic ger- generation of the plant once the zygote is produced it enlarges in size and fills the venter cavity now it undergo repeated anticlinal periclinal division to produce a mass of cell and this mass of cell will be carrying an outer layer known as amphithecium a m p h i t h e c i u m amphithecium and inner mass of cell see this an inner mass of cell called as endothecium endothecium this amphithecium and endothecium is now developing into a capsule or the sporagonium in the case of bryophytes normally the sporagonium include foot seta and capsule that is it will be having three region foot seta and capsule this is the foot portion this is the seta portion and uh, this is the capsule but uh, here in the case of rixia you can see only capsule that is foot and seta are totally absent in the case of rixia here you can see the capsule see this is the capsule produced in rixia the capsule is carrying an outer wall see this one this is known as the wall of the capsule and this wall of the capsule is produced from the amphithecium and are known as calyptra c a l y p t r a calyptra it is the wall of the sporagonium inside the calyptra you can see the spores these spores are produced from the endothecium the endothecium develops into the spore mother cell spore mother cell after meiotic division produces the spore tetrad see this these are the spore tetrad here each cell in a tetrad develop into an individual spore each spore after germination develops into a new thallus here always you should remember in the case of rixia the foot and seta are absent in sporagonium it will be carrying only the capsule and the capsule in turn includes uh, the 
spores. This is the life cycle of Rixia. See, it is having two phases that is the gametophytic phase and the sporophytic phase. The gametophytic phase is represented by the thallus. It reproduces through the vegetative reproduction and through the sexual reproduction. Here, the sporophytic phase is represented by the zygote, embryo, sporogonium, spore mother cells. In the all other portion that is the spores, uh, the antheridium and archegonium are coming under the gametophytic phase. This is all about the reproduction or the life cycle in the case of Rixia. Thank you all.